Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're going to discuss the current booster recommendations that have been approved by the FDA and the CDC. And I'll give you all some data on mixing and matching the vaccines so you can decide which one to get when it's time for your COVID booster shot. Let's first start by clarifying the current guidelines for booster shots. In the United States, we currently have three COVID vaccine booster options, Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. If you are fully vaccinated against COVID with two doses of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines, and it's been six months or more since your second shot, you're now eligible for a booster if you're 65 or older, or ages 18 to 64 with a chronic condition, or work in a situation that gives you ongoing exposure to COVID, like if you're a nurse or a doctor. If you were vaccinated with one dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine over two months ago, you're also eligible for a booster if you are 18 or older. You do not need to have any chronic conditions. So anyone who received J&J &J more than two months ago is now eligible for a booster. But the biggest question that patients have now is which booster should they get? Should they stick with the same one they got before or should they mix and match? Let's look at the data. The initial data on mixing and matching occurred quite by accident. Studies took advantage of a difficult problem that occurred in Europe with the two-dose viral vector AstraZeneca vaccine. Some countries, such as the UK and Sweden, suddenly and abruptly halted the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine due to an extremely rare but serious side effect of blood clots in the brain. And then when patients were due for their second shot 12 weeks later, the AstraZeneca vaccine was no longer available and many were provided with an mRNA vaccine from either Pfizer or Moderna instead. In Sweden, a study of hundreds of thousands of patients using an electronic medical record database found that those that received the AstraZeneca first, followed by Pfizer, were 68% less likely to develop a symptomatic COVID infection, 79% less likely if they received AstraZeneca followed by Moderna, and 50% less likely when patients received two doses of only the AstraZeneca vaccine. For those of us in the United States where the AstraZeneca vaccine was never used, it's a similar type of vaccine to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. They're both viral vector vaccines, but use a different virus to deliver the vaccine. And while the AstraZeneca vaccine requires two shots, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine only recommended one initial shot. But I do think that we can think of them in similar ways. So those of you that got the J&J &J vaccine can consider this data with AstraZeneca in a similar way. Denmark had similar findings with over 5 million patient records studied. Denmark stopped using the AstraZeneca COVID vaccine completely in April 2021. A study that hasn't been peer reviewed revealed that patients that received the AstraZeneca vaccine followed by the mRNA vaccine by Pfizer resulted in an 88% efficacy at preventing a SARS-CoV-2 infection, which is similar to the results for patients receiving two doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Whereas data has shown that two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine is about 67% effective, so mixing and matching the vaccines should theoretically provide stronger protection against infection. And finally, one more study from France found that mixing the AstraZeneca vaccine with an mRNA vaccine may actually have been more effective than two doses of just an mRNA vaccine. They analyzed data from over 2,500 healthcare workers who received a combination of AstraZeneca and the mRNA vaccine from Pfizer. This data was compared to over 10,000 people who received two doses of only the Pfizer vaccine. The data found that the rates of COVID infections in the mix and match group were half that of the group that received only the Pfizer vaccine. Isn't that fascinating? As I mentioned previously, we don't have as much data specifically for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, but the NIH released a preliminary study in mid-October that revealed that antibody levels against SARS-CoV-2 were higher in patients that received a J&J &J vaccine followed by an mRNA vaccine versus those who just got a second J&J &J booster shot. So for those of you who received the initial dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, 
I would recommend for your booster that you receive an mRNA vaccine at this point with either Pfizer or Moderna. But if those are not available, then simply get another J&J &J vaccine. But what about those of you that received two doses of either the Moderna or Pfizer vaccines that are now eligible for a booster? Should you also consider mixing and matching? And if yes, should you now consider the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Let's take into consideration that the Moderna vaccine's original dose was three times larger than the dose in Pfizer. And this is thought to be the reason why Moderna seems to have obtained a slight edge over the Pfizer vaccine in terms of durability and preventing infections. Currently cited at 93% for Moderna versus 88% for Pfizer. So with that in mind, the Moderna booster shot, meaning the third dose, is half the strength as the first two doses. The Pfizer booster, however, is the same dose as the original two doses. The NIH study that I mentioned earlier is really interesting. The authors specifically state that their study is not to be used to look at specific dosing recommendations because the same size is insufficient for intergroup comparisons and the demographics of those studies are not representative of the U.S. population. So I'm very aware that extrapolating data from studies and answering questions that were never asked can be problematic, but I still think there are some interesting trends that are worth looking at. This study looked at 458 people. They had all been fully vaccinated at least 12 weeks prior with either Pfizer, Moderna, or J&J and had not had a COVID infection since their vaccination had occurred. They were placed into nine separate groups and given boosters by Pfizer, Moderna, or J&J. &J. They then looked at mean levels of two different types of antibodies at days 1, 15, and 29. Let's focus just on the responses seen in the mRNA vaccines, either when the same mRNA booster vaccine was given or when a different mRNA booster was given. When the group that started with Pfizer was then boosted with Moderna, their antibody levels were higher than when people simply received another Pfizer shot. The same was not true if you started with a Moderna vaccine and then got a booster with Moderna. These antibody levels were actually the highest of all the groups. They were higher than if the Moderna group got boosted with Pfizer. But one huge caveat is that this study used the full dose strength of the Moderna vaccine for the booster instead of the half dose that's been approved. I'm sure that more studies will be coming that help us further clarify, but it makes sense that continuing to give high levels of a vaccine will continue to cause high levels of antibodies. And another caveat is that just because you measure a higher antibody level does not necessarily mean that you will have less risk of infection. We think that's the case, but the immune system is so complicated, and this is only measuring one type of immunity and protection. What about getting a booster with J&J &J after you started with the mRNA vaccines? In this particular study, overall antibody responses seem to not be as robust when patients received this combination. And furthermore, although the chances of the rare blood clotting disorder called thrombosis with thrombocytopenia or TTP are very small. If you're a young woman between the ages of 18 to 49, I would push you towards avoiding a booster with J&J &J for the mRNA vaccines out of an abundance of caution. So in conclusion, if you're eligible for a vaccine booster, any of them are going to give you a good immune response and hopefully increase your protection against a COVID infection. However, if you have lots of options and choices, here is what I would recommend. If you received one dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, I would recommend that you get a booster with either mRNA vaccine. Secondly, if you were fully vaccinated with two doses of either the Moderna or Pfizer mRNA vaccines, I would recommend that you get a booster with either Moderna or Pfizer and would not get a booster with Johnson & Johnson because the limited data we have shows that the immune response may not be as robust as a booster with an mRNA vaccine. Although, as I mentioned above, this data is very limited and I am extrapolating from this study in a way that they never intended, so we'll have to wait a bit longer for more finalized data on these combinations. And of course, please discuss any recommendations with your own doctor. 
Thanks for joining me.